So welcome everyone to today's webinar, uh, which is customer service, how to do it well, uh, proactive customer service, how to do it well. I think we all know about how to do customer service, but the proactive piece, I think, is uh, one that I know a number of people uh, uh, struggle with how to uh, pull that off. So I'm uh, delighted, I think, with our experts today. Uh, we'll have lots of great ideas for you. Delighted to welcome uh, Christopher Brooks from uh, Clientship. Uh, Christopher, welcome to today's webinar. Thank you. Great to be here. And you're going to be sharing with some of your ideas and some of the experience you've seen working with, with some of your clients. Yeah, absolutely. Looking, kind of taking one step back and just looking at the, the purpose and the, and the reality of what proactive customer service means to the wider enterprise uh, as much as the customer. So we'll see some uh, great examples, be some great takeaways there. And uh, Mike Murphy, I think, um, as, as we were discussing in the, in the preamble, a lot of these um, ways of going proact proactive and sort of not by chance, it's actually by putting the system together. And I think, you know, some of the technology could, could potentially really, really help that. Yes, and I think there's several things I, I would observe, Johnny, about, about technology in this, in this role. I think we have a lot of information about our customers already. Um, we have, if you like, a kind of a new way of handling our information right, by way of the cloud. And then we also have things like AI sort of coming into the picture. So, you know, the, the tools are kind of there, really, everybody, for, for you to be able to get really, really sort of like smart with your customers. Um, but, you know, the tools are there. We've kind of got to get you to pick them up and use them. So from that perspective, I think, expect a lot more from this subject, I would say, going forward. Yeah, I think it uh, would be great. And I think it's... Um... Uh, we start to get into self-service and so I think the proactive bit is going to become even more uh, even more critical. If you're not logged into our chat room, now's the time to do it. Here's the address. It's callcenterhelper.com forward slash chat. Um, there are is a big advantage being in our chat room is that once you're in there, you can download the webinar slides. It does come up in a, in a different window. So once you type this in, you'll have a, a window into our, our chat room here. Uh, and if you've got your screen is big enough, you can have the chat room on one side of the screen, the the uh, webinar slides on the other side of the screen, and you can see everything that's uh, going on. We've got quite a large number of people logged into the chat room already. So callcenterhelper.com forward slash chat. You can uh, also uh, watch a replay of today's webinar and download the slides after the webinar, uh, if you didn't get them from the uh, chat room. Uh, and that's at callcenterhelp.com forward slash recorded uh, webinars. If you've got any ideas or anything you've seen in terms of proactive customer service, or if you've got any questions, uh, put that into the chat room. If you do a hashtag question, if you're asking a question or a hashtag tip for a tip, and uh, we will, for the best tip today, be pulling out uh, a prize. Um, so it could be, if you would like, could be this rather nice bottle of uh, champagne here, or it could be a box of chocolates or an Amazon uh, gift voucher. Uh, I know a lot of people do like to uh, win win the tip. So just uh, do that through the chat room, callcenterhelper.com forward slash chat. But we're going to do um, uh, a, uh, a pulse point today in terms of a poll. And that is what things are you doing to make customer service more proactive currently? So tick all that apply. Are you sending out email alerts? Are you sending out text or SMS uh, alerts? Are you doing things like reducing the number of repeat calls that come through? Are you doing uh, regular proactive communication with your customers, keeping your customers informed of the uh, customer service? Uh, or would you say your organiza organization is not particularly proactive? And then no shame in, uh, uh, in admitting that. Be interested to see uh, where we come through. I think we've got most people have voted already. Um, so let's have a, a look at the uh, look at the results here, and um, I'll just share the share the results with everyone. Uh, Mike, it looks like um, uh, certainly one of the the most uh, popular way there is is communication through email or by uh, on less uh, less case with uh, text or SMS alerts. Yes, that's uh, they're just just nice. I suppose they're nice, simple tools, aren't they, for like confirming your order or confirming your delivery date or the fact that your your other of those may have changed. So that's that's something good to see, I suppose. Um, I suppose from from my perspective, um, are they proactive or are they just sort of confirmatory? Um, 
is that too racy to say at this point? <laughs> but, uh, well, we can, from the we can ask view, the audience, what, what are you sending out email alerts or, or text or SMS alerts? Certainly one of the things that if you raise a problem, it's quite nice if you get an email confirmation so you can yep. then track the progress of that problem. I'd say that would, was uh, was proactive. But if you've answered uh, for email or text uh, alerts, perhaps if you could uh, say what the alerts are for. Um, yep. Brittany says, yep. Uh, here we are. Uh, we use uh, text alert or we use alerts for software updates, saying you need to update mm -hmm. your software. That's quite a nice one. Uh, Jose says our drivers call 30 minutes before arriving at the patient's home. That's quite a nice one. Just to um, I, that's a particularly good one actually, because you often get this four-hour delivery window, and you think, oh, I might need to just pop out to the pop out to the shops. And if they say, well, we're about half an hour away, you'd stay in. Otherwise. I've certainly driven off down the uh, the road and um, seen a utility van driving up the lane, turned around and said, are you, you calling to see me? And uh, found out that they were. Um, uh, Brandy says a billing statement, we send an alert when a billing statement is ready or a, uh, an AR balance is due, uh, accounts receivable. Uh, Brianne says as a financial institution, when we send alerts, uh, we send alerts when spending behavior is irregular mm. to help val val uh, verify transactions. Uh, Debbie says alerts when payments are due and when they've been received and processed. Um, Sandy says stewardship tips and advice on events as a charity. Uh, we do a countdown to an event date. And Livingston says we follow up on all days, on all previous days, non deliveries to confirm delivery the next day. So I think that's a uh, that's a good range of uh, good range of um, yeah. examples there. So uh, that's probably quite a good takeaway. We'll see if we can uh, uh, write those up and uh, and, and summarise summarise those for everyone. So um, probably a good uh, good chance now to uh, jump across to uh, Christopher Brooks and um, Christopher. I know you've got some uh, great examples and uh, also about how you need to change your thinking in terms of uh, in terms of uh, becoming more proactive. So if you'd just like to put these slides up on the screen now. Yeah. Great. All good? There we are. Indeed. Excellent. Well, I think some of those examples um, shared there, John, are very interesting. I'll, I'll come on to that because there is uh, sort of different um, aspects, I think, of proactive customer service. Uh, it, it's, it's not a, it's not a com it's not a single um, state. You can break it down into different types of proactive customer services that we've seen. And I think some of those we have to accept are just business as usual now, um, but there are still really good opportunities to create distinction and differentiation through proactive um, customer service. Um, and, and, and I think for us, the fundamental is that it shouldn't be disparate or disconnected from everything else you're, you're doing it should fit in you know understanding what matters most to, to your customers when you should be serving them with proactive um, information and and how you fulfill this is as true in proactive customer service as it, in, as it is in any other aspect of customer experience so you know, you need to make sure it fits within your overall program um, when you're undertaking different activities in the, the customer, the broader customer service and customer experience strategy, ensure that this is a part of it rather than being kind of an afterthought or a, a, a trial piece. Um, and I'll come on to the reason for this it is important. Um, we, we find the organizations uh, that we're working with um, are at different states. You know, some are very proactive. We've heard about um, delivery alerts. Um, we've heard about change alerts and we've heard about financial alerts. I mean, alerts seem to be perhaps the common go to for um, proactive customer uh, service. But I think it's much broader than that. I think you've got to really think about three key dynamics. Um, the first is who is driving the discussion. Now, uh, it's really important to make sure that we understand there is a customer requirement that a proactive customer service interaction can support and improve. Now, hopefully and typically, it will also improve operationally for, for ourselves as organizations because it will help us be better informed to understand what the customer's next move is. But it really should be driven from that area. There is tendency because the technology capability is there to perhaps go to market a little sooner than the rest of the organization is, is ready to, to support. 
Um, and, and with that in mind, you know, is a proactive customer service approach right for the target operating model of the organization? I'll come on to this because if you are an organization that is well known for recovering um, uh, issues with, with customers, and it's a, it's a way that you actually retain the customers to be proactive, um, could actually work against you. So it is not a, 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 a one size fits all for, for everyone. And then the third part is, is this, this, this idea of the culture. You know, if you are a, on the front foot type organization, you are there out front helping customers, helping employees, helping your community. As an organization, you do things before they become an issue. Um, you need to have that as kind of a cultural um, foundation uh, if you're going to become very, very effective with uh, proactive customer service. It's not to say you shouldn't do it, but it, it will become less uh, likely that it's something can come, you can be defined by. Um, now, I think what we've always felt is important is to understand that when it comes to being proactive, you, you need to look and see where you are. I mean, as humans, we, we typically live in the past, present or future. We, we struggle to kind of live across different time paradigms. When it comes to customer service, have a look and see just how do we typically do things? Are, are we reactive? Um, do we wait for the event to happen? Do we do, do we take care as it happens? Or actually, do we have a, a business model and a business that allows us to be very proactive? Now, some organizations we've worked with actually will talk about being preemptive. And that means changing things fundamentally uh, within the organization to uh, adapt for future customer trends. So I think it's always really useful to make sure that if you're looking at this particular area, you, you, you get a soundbite against them. So, you know, what would reactive be? This is the sorry. You know, there was a problem. Uh, that you previously encountered, and here's what we're going to do about it. Now, I wouldn't say that organizations typically let this happen, but some are absolutely awesome at dealing with it when it does and find themselves bouncing up satisfaction scores because of the way they managed it. The active, you know, if you take something like a train line, now, uh, a railway company, it's very difficult. You know, there is a delay, here's how we're handling it some of the factors they won't be able to control and therefore making predictions and being proactive will be a real challenge for them. That they, You're much better off kind of knowing uh, closer to the moment of impact than you are much further ahead. Um, some areas, yes, you can be. We've, we've heard some great alerts, kind of the 30 minutes telling uh, a patient before the, the care worker arrives so the patient can get themselves ready is really important or for a, a delivery driver for the, the person to get home. In other areas, such as utilities, you may need to make some big changes. If you're gonna switch the water off or the electricity off, that can impact a family. And there are many customers registered as, as vulnerable now on, on, with, with the energy and water companies. And that can have a, a significant impact to the fundamental things for them. So they need that kind of proactiveness. And as I mentioned, preemptive is, you know, we've changed for your future benefit. I think it's really important to think that Proactive doesn't mean the thing that's about to happen. You can actually tell customers about significant changes you've made in the past that are going to have a great benefit for them in the future, a more strategic kind of look at it. Well, we're, now, going, to do a, those, we're going, going to jump uh, into it on that point. We're going to jump into a, a quick poll now, which said of, the, uh, of uh, all the points that Christopher uh, produced, which uh, one would best describe your organization's approach to customer service? Would you say it's reactive? Would you say it's active? Would you say it's proactive? Or would you say it's preemptive? So it'd be just uh, fascinating to see um, which of the uh, which of the ones you think most applies to your uh, to your organisation here. Uh, results are flooding in thick and fast. So I'll just uh, close this and I will share the uh, share the results. So here we go. Uh, the 54% would say they're reactive on your scale, 31% active, only 10% proactive, and 4% preemptive. So, uh, Christopher, does that surprise you, the, uh, the relatively small number of proactive? Uh, uh, yeah, yes, yes, it, it, it does. I, um, uh, I think there's... Um, the amount of alerts that I receive, I, I anticipate there's there is more out there. But um, it's good to be honest about the fact that we are. This is still a space that many are moving into. And it, indeed, it could be self-selecting that those people who are proactive don't need to attend a, a webinar on how to be proactive. There may be an element of self-selecting uh, 
in there. Yeah. So, uh, Christopher, back to you. Okay, great. There we are. My, sorry, my slides have. And we can see her recovery here, so. Okay, so when we talk about kind of reactive, um, these organisations, we all know how well they do at it uh, and, and get fabulous um, uh, results as a consequence. Um, it's built into their operating model um, and therefore it's very, very important that uh, they can retain some of this in there. Um, my, my slides aren't moving on now. Oh, here we go. Um, what we uh, have found is that actually dealing with the incident at the moment of impact is actually something that can be significantly commercially advantageous. Um, as, a, as a great uh, study done by uh, Harvard Business Review, it's worth having a look at about how you turn um, angry customers into, into loyal ones. And it shows actually the difference five minutes can make. You know, actually five minutes between um, someone complaining and going back can have a huge impact on their future purchase potential. So when you're looking to kind of justify how do we do proactive customer service, have a think about the impact that it can make. Um, it, it, this is reported in, in, in America and it shows that it gets an uplift of nearly $20 on every transaction um, against what it would have been if there hadn't have uh, been dealt with. And actually customers in this space, when they're then asked to rescore the organization, give an increase of 37 basis points on NPS. So, so actually managing very close to the issue, how you then go back and deal with it can be really fundamental. If you've put in place a proactive um, customer service strategy, it may well be some of this is lost. So it's, it's, it is something you need to sit down and work out commercially, how do we actually manage this effectively? Another consideration is that um, if you start to take out sort of the kinks in the road this, and, and, and smooth things over, make it frictionless for customers and proactive customer service is a great way of achieving that, then does it have an impact on your ability to be relevant and be valued by them? We take a, a classic example. If there's a, if there's a road and I'm um, uh, traveling down that road and uh, there's a bump there, if I stand there and tell, show you I put some planks over it to cover it. It's all very well and good. You can see what I've done there. You can see the impact that I've made and actually get a benefit from it. If that road gets repaired smoothly uh, and you, you can't see the problem that was there, neither the effort that's going into repairing it, how do you value it? How do you value kind of what's going on? So I think also we've got to be conscious of the fact that sometimes we're very, very good at dealing with incidents when they occur within, within organization. And, and that mustn't sort of be underplayed. If I don't value it, I might leave because I, I, I don't see the, the value that you are actually delivering to me. Um, and another, another point of consideration is this on the cultural shift. Sometimes moving into a proactive customer service state is very, very uh, impactful to the organization. If you take the, the, the water industry and the energy, the utility industry as a whole, they've moved into smart metering, which means the number of data points that they have compared to what they used to have is significantly different. So this particular example I found of, of Thames uh, Water, they've got uh, 375,000 smart meters out there, and that would have meant in, in old money, two physical meter reads a year. So that's how many manual reads they would have received on the data set. Now with the, the capability of smart, that's moved to 5 billion real-time data feeds. So there's so much more data, algorithms can work out and be much more predictive that you've got a greater opportunity, but the capability to manage that and deal with not only the proactive nature of sending out alerts, but also dealing with the customer interaction on the back of it is a huge change and an organization needs to be ready for that. Let's not forget as well that some of these proactive alerts, I can buy on Amazon for sort of $29.99 myself. So I can go out and get a water monitor, stick it on a pipe, and my phone will tell me if there's a leak. So we're already self-serving proactive customer service ourselves. You can get very, uh, very smart with this technology. Though. If you take in the water industry, the capability then to actually start to look at much wider areas, look at pipes, to be listening to things such as changes in the water flow, that then gives the organization the ability 
to recognize um, uh, that the, the pattern of behavior is not as it should be to connect back to data sets and see this typically results in a leak in the area and bam, everyone can become in, informed and, in, and, in, and start to make their own changes uh, to cope with the fact that the water is going to be switched off or there's a leak in the area. So it, it, it really does require a big change culturally to be able to make the most of um, proactive customer, customer service. And I think this is a way of just kind of just trying to assess where you are. If you look at your organization and think to yourself, you know, how do we value customers? If you see them as no more than a transaction or as a, a KPI um, and you're focused on, on service, then potentially you're not going to get the most value from proactive customer service. However, if you're looking at your customer as a long term relationship and you already see them as an asset you must protect, then uh, an activity like proactive customer service is probably going to be pay dividends. Otherwise, customers you know, might misunderstand what you're trying to achieve with it. So try and think where you land on that particular chart in your organization. And that red um, box will give you an idea of perhaps where you should be if you're going to make the most from proactive customer service. And let's not kid ourselves, it's been around for a while. So as consumers, we get alerts all the time. I drive up to a car park barrier, I drive over a sensor, the barrier goes up. That is proactive service from that car park for me. It's enabled me to get out. These things occur all the time. There are messaging, I, I know it's obvious, but I walk, if I go onto the tube and it tells me to remove the item because it will slow the tube down. Or even the famous air freshener that can recognize movement in the um, WCs and therefore it will spray a nice odor. So we are all be the beneficiaries of a proactive customer service um, uh, ethos all of the time. So one of the things to bear in mind is you may not get any fame for this. You, putting it in place doesn't necessarily mean customers will value and love you for it. But actually this thing goes on all the time all around us. And actually, I, I quite like this example as uh, uh, we do a lot of work in, in South America and, and it was kind of recognizing that, wow, look in London, they actually tell you which way of the street to look down before you walk out, which is a lovely kind of alert. And, and I couldn't resist including this one that John C kind of pointed out. Even on your phone, you have this alert that tells you actually your phone's going to run out. So it, it's going on around us all the time. Um, if you want to start thinking about the long term potential you probably also need to take a good, hard, long look at your data. Um, if you want to start thinking about preemptive customer service, then the capability to actually fulfill that is, uh, is really important. You may need to reassess your data. You may need to consolidate your data. We said earlier about the airlines with um, dates of birth, uh, and of course they have to be right, but how many of us work in organizations where we know some of the data is not correct? If we're going to be using that as part of algorithms to do predictive, um, proactive messaging to customers, it's going to get uncomfortable if we keep getting responses back to say, this is wrong. Um, I don't, this isn't true about me. This doesn't help me. I like that message earlier about the um, Thomas Cook alert to Barclays customers. I don't bank with Barclays, I bank with a different bank. And actually I got an uh, alert to say, beware, uh, we, we, you may need to contact this number. They see, they've seen my transactions for the last 20 years. I've never had a Thomas Cook holiday. Um, so they could have used that data a lot more effectively for me. Um, I really think it's important to understand the benefit of providing this level of service to customers. What are they going to get out of it? And this is where we get to kind of the heart of it, because if you can really understand what you're going to deliver, you can build a much better proactive customer service. You will inform them. But most importantly, probably on this list, is that point around choice, about having more control over the choices I make. If the water's going to be switched off in a couple of hours, I can choose to take my children around to my um, my mum's house so that they can be fed, bathed, and then we can put them to bed when we bring them home. It's putting me in control of those choices. Um, it's also about being respectful. It's recognising this will have an impact on your customers and therefore you respect the fact that they need to know this information. It might create a new opportunity for me. If my flight is going to be delayed, I might decide to do a little bit of extra shopping. Um, and, and also within the context of what you're presenting, it's really worth thinking that this is the start of the 
service experience for the customer. They weren't expecting this information. Now they've been served it, it's the start. I think I've heard too often the, the, the sense that you know, we've got the information out, job done, we've made them aware. From a customer's perspective, it's just the start. From an organization's perspective, it's slightly different. You know, we might be thinking about reducing the cost to serve. It gives us a chance to demonstrate empathy. If we think about that water scenario, it allows us to recognize we know you have a family, we know you may need to make changes. It does, as we saw earlier from the Harvard Business Review example, increase satisfaction, we get new data. If we know that customers have had to make changes and they've informed us about it, we've got new data that can help us in our relationship with them. And I think what's really important to note here is on your customer journey maps, you now have a new customer experience touch point. You can look and see by including that touch point what's happened to the future relationship of the customer. If your NPS is shot up, you know, this is a positive thing. Are there other points we can actually look to do the similar thing as well? Um, the final point I'd like to make is, is around breaking down proactive customer service into three different component parts. The first is inform me, and, and I saw this, which, which is quite a, a, a worrying alert, but it's a real alert that went out in Hawaii from uh, the, the government office, and it was, a, it was an error, it should never have gone out, but it had a massive impact, as you can imagine, on society, and it took a number of um, interventions before they were able to go out and say, we're sorry, this was a mistake. The inform me um, stage, so what? What am I gonna do with this information? You've now burdened me, burdened me with, with information and I've got to do something about it. So if that's the, the nature, if that's the level you're pitching at, then actually probably you're creating more stress and strain for your customers. But this is a, and I put the YouTube connection here, go and have a look at this. This is a nice video, it's about four or five minutes, we won't play it to you. But it's actually just, you know, the airport of the future and Eindhoven Airport have actually put together a, a nice piece around how you use proactive customer service to make the experience in an airport. But any one of us could, could take lessons from this uh, forward. And the, the first thing they kind of tap into is this second level, which is um, adjust me. And what we mean by that is that telling me that something is actually changed um, so that I can adjust what I'm doing. So here we go, your flight departs 10 minutes later, the arrival time of your AMBA, which is your car share car, has been adjusted automatically. So that was an impact to me, it was a positive impact, but actually the data's connected to be able to say, we'll move that car share forward rather than get you to the airport. So if you, can't do, if you can do something with the data that you're serving to customers, it can make such an impact to them, it takes away one less issue for them. And then the third level here is optimize me. And I think this is where you start to get distinction and you start to build in real value to your proactive customer service. So in this particular situation, the customer is sitting in the airport and they've been told that they've got an extra 35 minutes. So they get served with some offers that actually they can take advantage of during those 35 minutes. And in this particular scenario, the customer elects to take um, the restaurant offer that alerts the restaurant, they start preparing his food, he goes through security and it's there. And that's all a consequence of a proactive customer service strategy. So it really is thinking about taking it to the third level. Apologies for the colors here, but kind of you'll see how these two things come together. Um, if you look at the dynamic of reactive to preemptive and you think about how you deliver it, you end up in four different paradigms. Now the space you wanna be is in thrive. Um, the space you don't wanna be is necessarily in dive. Uh, and I'll give some examples of those sorts of things. So the ring, uh, we all love ring, um, but that alert to tell us if someone's standing on our doorstep with a crowbar is something perhaps is at a moment, it's not necessarily that useful for us. And likewise with the boards, I expose the fact that there's a problem and I take away the problem. I perhaps shouldn't have the problem in the first place. The survive stage I think is quite interesting and you have travel organizations um, telling you your flight has been delayed, but they're just telling you your flight's been delayed. It could be painful, but at least they've kept you informed or the barrier that goes up just as you're going across it. Where it starts to get interesting on the right-hand side, uh, and this is where I think you find um, organizations like um, uh, Amazon and with the uh, courier companies trying to tell you this thing is about to happen. Uh, we talk about the water example, but they're not actually giving you any value from that extra information. You can't do anything with that extra time or that information you've got. But it's when you get to this top right hand corner, you do get some interesting stuff. And, and this particular example with the umbrella is a, is a good one. If you, 
think about a car dealership and you pull up outside and there's a it's raining if you're returning to that car dealership quite often you see as you drive through these places they captured your uh, registration number that signals inside um, someone says customers coming in onto the uh, the forecourt um, they've been here before they like a latte you go out with an umbrella um, they don't need to hold the umbrella they've got a free hand you give them a coffee so they can walk in with it and that's where you're really proactively optimizing the value of the service that you've you've provided and, and, that, and that's my final point on it it really is about what you do with proactive customer service as opposed to just um, activating it that I think is absolutely key So, John T, are you on mute? Uh, yeah, we can't hear you. Okay. So, thank you very much indeed for that. Some uh, great uh, takeaways there. Be on the front foot to be uh, proactive. Um, quite an interesting point you raised there. How how do you how does the customer value proactive if they can't see what you've done? So, I think there's certainly uh, keeping people informed. Uh, we need to ensure that the data is right if you're going to be proactive. And I, I think a very very key one: put customers in control of their choices inform me but also adapt me and optimize me so i think some uh, some great takeaways there uh thank you uh, christopher for that we're going to jump into the uh, chat room have a look at uh, uh the uh, uh chat that's been coming through we had a few uh, people with some um uh, examples of proactive uh, debbie said i was trying to book a holiday with friends but there were no flights for two of them from edinburgh uh, jet two owned the issue as soon as the flights were available they called me to sort out the uh, booking which i think was a great uh, great example Brilliant. rather than just leaving it uh, behind stuart says that as a water company i think you had that example earlier we proactively text our customers if we have a supply problem due to an unexpected burst on a water main that might impact them so i think uh, uh, that's a very very good example of uh, of proactive um and roberta says that we sometimes send an alert when we need an important well, sorry, when we send an important email, so they, know, need, so they know that they need to read the email we sent. So presumably that's the alert okay. sent out by text, that's, I'm guessing. Perhaps that I didn't talk about, um, John, too. That's a really good one, Roberta, is, is to not think about this is, as a single channel, but actually combining the channels um, could be really effective. And that's a very good example of how you can do that there from Roberta. Yeah, that's uh, certainly very good. One of the things you just got to watch out there was sometimes with... Uh, text messages is they don't necessarily appear instantly if they're delayed in the in the network can be sometimes uh, uh, as an example of that uh, was informed of uh, uh, during the week where it took about two and a half hours for the text message to get through um, after which everything had been uh, been resolved uh, Claire's got a tip we look at what has been answered in surveys to see what the customer wants and making changes to the future such as customers have said they've not joined us for financial reasons. So we've just launched a pay-as-you-go facility to help everyone, help with everyone's financial needs. I think that's a sort of great example, the sort of um, uh, you said we, we did, which I think is, uh, is a great one. Here's a question that's come in from Brianne saying, has anyone had a, any success implementing a proactive chat avenue? Uh, any success stories that have increased sales production? So um, if you've got any examples of those, if you'd like to, um, if you'd like to put those into the, uh, into the chat room, uh, would, be, uh, would be good. Um, I, I think, got... I think uh, sorry, I think ASOS is an, organ is an organization that's worth looking at because that is their primary channel for uh, customer service. So there's a lot can be learned from those if, if people have a look at what ASOS are up to. Yeah, and I certainly think one of the nice things with chat is it gives you that um, immediacy of communication, which can work uh, work quite well. We've got a couple of tips that have come in. Uh, this says detect when a customer has a high value basket and is taking a long time to check out. In this scenario, an organization pro can provide a proactive pop-up to answer any questions that high value customer may have, reassuring them of their decision but they, before they follow through on, on purchase. Mike, that's quite a nice um, example of, um, I guess, proactive chat. Indeed, I'm, I'm, I'm biting my lip here, really, because uh, we, we have a capability of challenges that we acquired uh, last year. 
um, it was a Galway based company, uh, the West of Ireland, and uh, they were called Autocloud. So uh, Lisa and Brianne, actually, for the previous question, just uh, uh, Google that and have a little look. But um, it's a you know it's an interesting capability, if you like, just to to spot the opportunities when to touch the customer with a prompt to say what do I need to do to help you kind of move this forward. So uh, it's it's smart. It's not crude. It's sophisticated. So it's kind of like uh, it's it's you know learning if you like what works and what doesn't work. But uh, yeah, it's um, we have a capability at Genesis to help help you do both of those. <laughs> Well, um, probably now is a good time then as uh, any to jump into uh, Mike uh, some of the ideas you've got about how the ways that technology can help you uh, become more uh, more uh, more proactive. So, uh, if you'd like to pop your slides up on the uh, up on the screen, would be uh, would be great. I'll do that now. And you know me, Johnny. I try not to be uh, too uh, unsubtle about my my role at Genesis. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but thanks thanks everybody for. Um, for our, our contributions so far, the uh, the tips are really really helpful. By the way, just from my role, if you like, on the webinar, it's it's, it's great to get that real time feedback. So so thank you for that. And, and Christopher, great great content and thought provoking <laughs> content for sure. So um, like I said like I said at the start, I like I like this subject. And uh, there's several things I think just to um, kind of remember, if you will, that uh, that I want to kind of touch on. I mentioned I want to sort of share some ideas, and I'll certainly do that. I suppose. Um, you know, one of the things that I like to relate to, I suppose, is this this notion of, um, you, you know, your spine tingles when, when something really cool happens. You know, like, uh, and I'm, it might be, you know, I'm at Disney and the, the you know, Mickey Mouse comes up and gives me a hug and happy birthday. You know, that kind of, that's really, really nice. And I suppose in, in the context of, you know, like um, an opportunity or, or, or a moment of, of, of delighting a customer, like the, the unexpected happens and it's just such a beautiful sort of experience. And then the challenge, obviously, is that a create that, deliver that safely to the point where the customer has that spine, spine tingle of excitement and, and you know pleased with the brand. But then you know repeat that um, you know 300,000 times a day, uh, 750,000 customers, 300 million customers. You know it, the, the, the scale of, of what we're asking to achieve here can become extraordinary. And I suppose don't get concerned about that, but just just think about the fact that we all want to be individuals. Um, and we all want to try and you know do something better for our customers, but I suppose commercially we also have to be different uh, and compete as a, as a brand. And uh, in a way, I kind of see proactive customer service as a way to differentiate and, and a way to kind of you know, keep your competitors at bay and keep them guessing. Uh, so therefore, I kind of think that needs to come into our into our thinking as well. So just the the, the, the three things I wanted to sort of um, uh, expose a little bit about really was. Uh, the idea of gathering the facts, and I mentioned earlier that we do have a lot of information about our customers, and I suppose uh, the questions I'm asking is, are we actually using that information? So I, I've got some thoughts on that I want to share. And then this notion then of like you're thinking about your customer, and 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 you know we we, we all should be thinking about our customers every day. That's part of the role that we play as you know, the customer experience industry, right? So we should be doing this every day. But but actually, are we? And are we thinking about our customer from a proactive perspective? Um, and obviously, from the from the polls that we saw already, yes, we're kind of used to, if you like, reacting to the to the daily workload, and, and we were forecasting and planning and projecting and organising and being operationally effective. But act, you know, that's great. But then the the, the, the number of, of of audience members who were active in the in, in the proactive side was, was was quite low. So to that end, you kind of have to sort of step out of the day to day and think about how bringing proactive into the organisation can actually help. And, and like Christopher mentioned, it becomes very strategic. Then I suppose the next thing I wanted to sort of, you know, lift lift the lid on what he is the idea of orchestration. Uh, so how how can we do this, and how the, can this become a reality? So in the, in the idea of gathering the facts, um, we 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 have this sort of uh, this is like a, an observation, if you will, of, of customer experience and the customer experience market. Um, you know, you, you'd be familiar with the phrase CRM and, and you know, the idea of customer relationship management, relationship management, uh, knowing lots of information about my customer, and, and that's kind of worked very well as a strategy for for us all, if you like, in, in the industry. Um, you can kind of see that the the, the the trend towards that relationship management tends to be kind of more towards the sales side of things, uh, maybe enhancing a sort of a e-commerce platform where you're kind of taking your transactions and fulfilling them and updating the customer and you're probably from those applications like your commerce platform 
you know, I've taken your order, that goes confirmation of the order, and, and that's great. But it's like it's confirmation of the order, and that's, that's, that's nice to see that I've had the little alert on the email, super. But like I questioned earlier, is that proactive? Yes, it's mm -hmm. reassuring for me as a customer to know that my order has been you know, received, uh, a delivery date has been set. Uh, it's nice to sort of see that, but I kind of feel we're, you know, I'm, I'm thinking proactive in a different angle. I'm, I'm kind of thinking, I want proactive to be a bit more special. To me, like notifying me of what's happened is just good, not cool. And I suppose I'm kind of trying to pursue the idea of, of, of more on the cool side. On the left of the screen, you have this like customer experience area where, from you know, from from my sort of like career, really, I, I spent a lot of time in the kind of contact center area. And, and uh, from that point of view, handling the interactions, I always find is is very very different. And what you learn there is very very interesting. And more and more, it's becoming this idea of experience driven. And we really have to get away get away from the you're in the queue and you'll be answered shortly. And I really think we have everybody. I really think we have, but. You know, we got to get away from the fact that I work in an industry where you're in a queue to be answered shortly. That's pretty grim conversations over dinner on a Saturday night when people say, "So what do you do, Mike?" For a living? you know, um, you know, customer service has to be has to be better, has to be sharper, has to be always challenged. Um, but if you like, on the experience side, we learn a lot about how to help our teams of people deliver good service. So both of these kind of areas of industry are, are providing lots and lots of information. And therefore, we should be able to access this information to kind of help us do better. And therefore, as a as a repository of facts, I think we we are abundant in facts. And you know, here's some examples, if you like, of you know, the, the the break from trail. It's, it's a phrase I've used before, where I can remember the touches for this customer. It's a guy called um, John Elliott, and I can kind of see where John has kind of touched my brand over the last number of years. I can also see the kind of channels he's used. Um, that's an interesting sort of statement of fact. I can see when he last sort of like touched my brand, and that's quite that's quite empowering and quite powerful. But am I actually leveraging that? Am I am I notice, noticing that information? Am I using that information to kind of do something proactive for John Elliott? And uh, that's kind of my challenge to you because I kind of feel we have this data already, we're just not actually lifting it and using it in the right kind of way. Uh, another example, if you like, would be. You know, we have terabytes of recordings often, you know, like lots and lots of information in our core recordings, things that we had to do for compliance. But if you will, by getting that, that sort of information into a structured shape um, using tools like analytics, that, that's a really cool thing to do. Suddenly I can get this idea of a transcription and um, that then gives me some great insights to facts. And if you can remember where Crystal mentioned about you know, maybe I have to do something like long term or say to my customers, like we are launching a new uh, platform and we're expecting good results. And oh, by the way, uh, Mr. Mike Murphy, customer, I know you were affected by this like uh, six months ago. I really apologize about that. But just to let you know, we've addressed that. And now that, that's sort of like uh, you should find it better going forward. That's a really nice thing to happen. And from this kind of structured data, I can actually find the opportunities of where the conversation that happened with Mike Murphy about the fact that you know my bill was wrong, and now that I've actually got to actually fix it, let's just ping him and sort of say, by the way, you had that problem in the past, we resolved it. Hope you look forward to you know, having you as a customer long term in the future. As an example, the, the other thing as well is it's not just capturing, if you like, audio, uh, conversational sort of information resources. Um, we are messaging much, much more these days, and if we can resolve our issues over messaging whether it's email, chat, whatever sort of messaging you choose, we're tending to try, if you like, and resolve our issues more over messaging, I would say, than over voice. So from that perspective, you know, any sort of like tool that you have to be able to find these opportunities needs to be able to adapt to both. So kind of keep that in mind. It's, it's, it's kind of really, really important. So if you like, with that repository of information that we have, and, and remember, that's just from the activity side of the house, I would expect you to have an equal amount of abundant information of the relationship side of the house or the commerce side of the house. I want to I want to challenge you now to sort of think about how can I actually get that data into a into a into a situation where I can where I can use it. And you know we, we, we know about things like journey mapping and we have your know, organizations and strategies and best practice around how, how to do that, uh, how to kind of learn from what happened with a customer and kind of make things better, shaping the journey better. That's that's also quite useful. Uh, remember my initial comments about making it personal to me. That that becomes quite quite important now because yes, generally I want to make things better for my customers, but 
you know, to actually delight me, uh, to kind of show me that you're proactive, tends to have to kind of get quite personal and quite intimate to a, to a customer. So, you know, engaging at the right moment, uh, engaging in the right channel, and engaging with the right resource as well. So, it's, it's all very well finding an opportunity to, um, you know, we, we see this customer, they're buying a r rather important item or a, lar a large uh, value item, if you like, online. They're kind of going through the selection process and uh, we can kind of see there's something in the basket that we'd like to encourage that customer to uh, talk to us to help them to just make sure they fulfill. Now, the last thing I want to do is to put that customer in touch with somebody who isn't the right, you know, appropriate skill level to actually do that successfully. So we have to be very smart about how we kind of connect our customers with our with our teams to make sure the right outcome is, is achieved. <clears throat> so again, another angle might be: so what is the what are these sort of items that the customers are asking us about right now? And this is a useful sort of tool. And, and, and think about this because it does tend to change. And uh, what what's able to happen, if you will, by being able to analyze information, analyze those conversations. You can kind of get like a top 10 list every day of what are the issues that are, you know, like uh, causing our customers to, well, what are they talking about right now, today, this week, this month? And that's helpful to actually then bring back to the boardroom to sort of say, right, how do we actually resolve this? Why are we having this volume of interactions around this subject? Do I need to fix something on my website? Do I need to fix something on my logistics or something on my, you know, a, a third party perhaps? So again, you make that part of your thinking, and, and, and the information, if you will, I would tend to say is is abundant. This was, was quite an interesting point that Jonty made to me, and, and the fact that once we actually recognise an opportunity to actually provide a, a proactive touch, let's just kick that into a into a case, generate a case, so that we don't forget. But that that often kind of happens. And remember, we're trying to get smart here. We're trying to get uh, you know show the customer that we're on it on their behalf. So by generating a case, it just makes sure that we don't get lost. It doesn't get sort of ignored or forgotten, and uh, that was quite a kind of a useful tip that Johnny passed to me when we were doing our preparation. Okay, so then um, the other thing that uh, I kind of wanted to sort of bring in was the idea of so what do we not know about that we kind of should know about? And um, again, when you're when you're when you're doing the kind of analysis type work, it's often interesting just to kind of ask that question, um, so we can kind of see the top 10 things that customers are talking about and, and, and writing about and testing about and messaging about. That's cool. But then one of the things that are kind of like coming up, if you like, on the on the, on the the left-hand side, the unexpected, shall we say. And to be able to kind of just get an insight to that and, if you like, relate where some of the topics that we're seeing actually generate a, you know, it may not be an issue right now, but guess what, in three days' time that can become an important issue. Uh, a bit like when the Ash Cloud thing happened in travel you know, several years ago, it kind of started as this kind of a small little thing that was kind of important to some countries but not to others, and then suddenly the whole of Europe was kind of taken out by this volcano in Iceland. So to that end, being able to kind of have early insights to what's kind of coming up as a issue for your customers is kind of good proactive information to get on the front foot with to uh, show your customers that you are ready and you can actually help them in their time of need. Okay, so I suppose the, the idea of my, my, my thinking really was we have the information, we have, if you like, insights to kind of tell us, you know, and help us think about how to improve for our customers, but then how to actually go about executing. And I suppose the, 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 the notion that I wanted to share here is that with this information, like the Internet of Things, for example, is generating lots and lots of facts, and we have, if you like, the insights that, that, that are sort of important to customers. So for me, this is like opportunity. But it's only opportunity if I'm able to leverage and get to the data and then fulfill the data at the right time. So when I want to make that sort of touch to Mike to not just say happy birthday, but oh, by the way, here's a, uh, uh, I don't know, let's say a, a code for you to enter into our website to give you a special offer because we think that you're important to us. You know, a nice thing to receive by way of a message, build some loyalty. And, uh, but, I, but I want to know about when's the right time for me to send that to Mike, and is Mike the right person to send that to? And based upon a variety of conditions, I can sort of start to use my data, and if you like, orchestrate my data to build those type of, type of little, like little campaigns, really. Now, this isn't sort of stuff that we need to be relying on IT for, because we, you know, they've got stuff to worry about. These are tools that should be able to be used by the business within the business so that you can understand what the experience is that you're defining for your customer, you can kind of change it 
from the floor, or not, not be expecting, if you like, uh, third parties to do that for you. We, we have learned over time that we have to kind of learn by our mistakes. So part of this, if you like, is helping you differentiate from your competitors. So launching a, a new way to kind of uh, encourage your customers, please your customers, uh, thank your customers, um, you know, provide more sort of like opportunities for loyalty. They're kind of like areas where these kind of tools help you to explore those. And you'll find ones that work that you kind of build on. You'll find ones that fail, but that's useful. That's learning. That's that's positive. Yes, it failed, but actually it's knowledge. We know, therefore, not to pursue that angle, but let's explore this angle. And when we find opportunity, that's kind of how we sort of learn over time and bring in something different. So from that perspective, I like the idea of being able to copy, look and learn, repeat, repeat. And from that, if you like, evolve into a different relationship with my customer that I think I think customers are looking for. I suppose based upon the, the polls that we saw so far, a kind of a challenge question I would ask to you as I sort of wrap up now is, you know, when was the last time your experience flows were challenged? Be they, you know, IVR flows, be they on, online tools, be they contact center tools, you know, the, the actual touch points for your customers, have they been the same for the last one year, two years, five years, longer? And if that's the case, you know, I'm getting a bit tired. I need to kind of feel that you're on it. So therefore, that's that's kind of a challenge. And with that, Charlie, that brings me to the end. I hope that was helpful. Thank, thank you very much indeed for the for that, Mike. There's some uh, great points that, that you made there. Gather the data. You've probably already got the the data in your in your system. So it's just really a question of uh, of using it. It's important to shape the journey to make it uh, customer uh, uh, personal to the uh, individual. Uh, you can use things such as analytics to drill down on the information, particularly good way uh, to find out what are the issues affecting customers. Uh, if you're going to be proactive, it's really an iterative process. Look and learn, copy from other examples you've used before, and just repeat and repeat and repeat. Keep doing it. And I think, you know, just great advice you had, Mike, there. The tools are there. It's really just a question of uh, of using them. So. Uh, now is the uh, you know there's probably been a, never been a better time to be more more proactive. So it's just a question of using the tools. So if you'd like to have a uh, a view of some of those tools, I'm sure Mike would be uh, more than happy to uh, arrange a demonstration of the uh, Genesis, Genesis Cure Cloud system uh, or some of the uh, analytic tools that uh, he was talking about or some of those uh, data flow tools. So if you'd like to um, if you'd like to see a demonstration of those, now is the uh, uh, now is the time to do that. And we're going to jump across and have a look at some of the uh, top tips and uh, questions. So um, let's have a look at some of the, the tips that are coming through. If you uh, uh, want to leave a tip, there's a good chance of winning uh, one of the prizes, the champagne or the uh, chocolates or the Amazon gift card. Uh, here's one from uh, Dennis Six. Uh, it said, be careful on how previous purchase <laughs> information is used. I get annoyed when I received information about similar products I just bought, when there really there's very little chance of an immediate repeat purchase. For example, if I buy a tablet last week, chances are it'll be a while before I uh, I, I need to buy another one. Certainly, I I, I see that uh, on the internet a lot of um, why don't you go to this place for this holiday and it's like or even to this hotel, and actually I've just booked with you, so and you're still following me around saying. Why don't you book a holiday uh, there? So I think there is, um, uh, as Mike says, uh, uh, and you've got the data, uh, but you need to uh, you, you need to use it uh, intelligently. Um, John has said one thing I would suggest is being aware of your customers if you're sending multiple messages, for instance, or i.e., sending an alert about another comms method. This to some customers might be fine, but to others might deem this as overload, so it should be customizable to the custom, customer. You also need to be aware of the frequency of this, i.e. an alert via SMS when there is a conversation going via email. It can be very frustrating if you really need to consider how you implement things and put yourself in the, in the customer's shoes. Mike, do you think there's a, there's a danger of um, overloading on, on the proactivity? So, yeah, I think, I think yeah, so my, my, my observation there, John, would be I, I, I wholly agree. And I suppose I, I would say it depends on what you're trying to achieve. And, you know, if you're servicing um, or maybe selling to, if you like, your customer, then you're quite right. 
I don't want to kind of overload. I don't want to kind of frustrate. I, I don't want to, uh, if you like, annoy my customer. Uh, in the same vein, if I'm actually uh, collecting from a customer who maybe owes me some money, um, the fact that, like, um, like Chris mentioned earlier, you know, I, I sent a, an email out, or maybe actually it was one of the the, 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 audience, the audience participants. You know, I sent out an email, which is quite important for this consumer to actually uh, to read, and therefore I kind of want to just know that a, you know, this is important, Mike. You're going to step up and. I'm expecting to have a conversation with you on Tuesday at two o'clock about this subject, and therefore I'm sending you a message now to make sure you know that I'm going to be calling you at two o'clock on Tuesday. And by the way, I have sent you an email, and I want to see that you've read that. You know what I mean? So I, I kind of get it, John. True, we don't want to over over blight, if you like, but there are other parts of the business where you might find that quite useful. Indeed, here's a, a, a nice one, Christopher, that uh, Brianna said. Uh, Another best practice I've experienced is using proactive to help welcome and onboard new customers. This creates a great first experience and helps improve future customers' experiences. I think that's a, that, that's a particularly good example and we've um, actually picked up on, on today. So I think that's a, a great takeaway. Yeah, I think onboarding is really important because it creates that, not only that um, acknowledgement but it also sets out the nature of the relationship. What I would say, and I bet Brianne would agree with me on this, is that if you've got a very siloed organization, when that then moves into the retention team or the account management team, can they sustain that level of contact? Because you've set a high expectation for me as a customer, and therefore I'm gonna to expect to have these contact points as we go through. Otherwise, um, you, you, you need to really think, can we sustain it? Uh, but if you can do it, then of course, it's a great way to introduce the customer into the organization and demonstrate you acknowledge and value them. Indeed, and uh, here's an interesting uh, tip from, or experience from John, who said, uh, a good example of proactive customer service is replacing a credit card with a large uh, credit card company. They identified fraud, contacted me via text. I replied back via text, then called them. They cancelled the card, immediately sent me a replacement card. Right then and there, and then and there, they gave me the replacement number so I could make the necessary changes mm. on the accounts uh, for which I had auto phase. Um, I think that's probably a very good example of being proactive. Yeah, that's an adapt me. Uh, it, it's important. I mean, it's such an impact, isn't it, when you're with your online um, transactions? So, just giving me a card in time is painful because in the meantime, I'm going to get loads of alerts saying your payments failed, your payments failed. That's a really good example of that level two adapt me. Indeed. Well, unfortunately, we've reached the uh, top of the, uh, almost reached the top of the uh, hour. So I'm going to have to wind up today's uh, webinars. So uh, if you could put into the chat room in one or two words, what did you like best about today's webinar? Let's have a look at uh, today's winning tip. And uh, that comes from uh, Dennis, who says, companies should actively promote their service failures and how they made it right instead of hiding them. I guess, Christopher, this is a bit like your example of the, uh, the boards over the road. People like to deal with companies who recognize that they are not perfect and have a good process to fix it when it happens and correct their processes uh, when it was at fault. So I think that's an excellent, um, an excellent. I agree. Uh, so if you'd just like to complete the uh, survey as you uh, leave, give uh, us some feedback so we can be more proactive on uh, on future webinars. And um, uh, if you want to watch the replay, that will be available uh, later on today. Uh, next week, we're actually going to be looking at customer journeys and how to make those more personal. So if you're not already uh, booked into that, now's the uh, time to do it. And just like to thank our two speakers. Uh, Christopher Brooks, thank you for joining us for your uh, first word, but I'm sure it won't be your last. Thank you for having me. I've had a great time and a really good topic. So thank you, John T. And thank you, Mike. Uh, always a, a pleasure to hear you speak. And Mike, it's been brilliant to have you today. Thank you very much, both of you. And to the audience, it's been fun. Look forward to the next one. Indeed. And so and everyone on the audience will be back uh, this time next Thursday. Uh, look forward to speaking with you. Thanks then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.